A lot of people have their TBR or to be read lists. For me, I have a TBW or to be watched, and it is incredibly long. Well, I did have a bit of downtime this week, and I decided to tackle something off that list. So I watched a Spanish Netflix mystery from 2018 called Mirage, or Durante la Tormenta. It's kind of during the storm, which eh, makes sense within the movie. But it's kind of like a mix of Back to the Future, Frequency, and Primer. But was it any good? A space-time continuum glitch allows Vera to save a boy's life 25 years earlier, but results in the loss of her daughter, whom she fights to get back. Now, this movie made my head hurt. The story starts off in 1989 as the Berlin Wall is coming down, so it puts us securely in time and space. Well, a young teenage boy is left home alone as his mom goes to work, and there is this massive storm brewing. And after hearing a strange noise coming from his neighbor's house and then going over to investigate, the kid has an accident. And then the story flashes forward 25 years, and we follow a woman named Vera, who's moving into a house with her husband and young daughter. And that house just happened to have belonged to the boy from 1989. And this is when my head really started to hurt. There are elements in this that are very reminiscent of a time travel movie, but there's no actual time travel device. It's almost a bit like that Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock movie, The Lake House, where there are semi-parallel timelines going on. Well, anyway, I mean, I'm not trying to get too bogged down in all of the sci-fi elements because I'm really not sure that I can adequately explain every one of them. Anyway, though, Vera is somehow able to see and connect with the boy Nico from both of their present times. So he's in 1989 and she's in 2014. And coincidentally, there's also a massive storm happening in Vera's time on the exact same date as it did in Nico's time, which presumably allows the shifting of times or maybe realities to occur. Now, there's a sort of a murder mystery that's at play in this, but also a race against time for Vera to change the past. And this is when the story gets fairly convoluted because Vera's present begins to be affected in strange ways, leading to discombobulation on her part, and then on mine. <laughs> and I really don't say that as a bad thing either. This confusion and the headache, that's what helped draw me into the story even more. And it does make sense when all is said and done. But before that, there are a lot of huh moments mixed with then with the oh comment. Now, for fans of Back to the Future, there are several Easter eggs that are fun to see in this. Pay special attention to Nico's recording setup, and then there's a moment where he's skating down a street at night. The nods are just outstanding to that classic time travel movie. Now, I find myself very drawn to the main characters. We have Adriana Ugarte playing Vera, Chino Darren playing Inspector Lera, who is a cop Vera approaches to help her kind of make sense of what's going on. And then Alvaro Morte playing David, Vera's husband. And you'll recognize him as El Profesor from La Casa de Papel. Now, they all work to create environments that raise questions about events, and then more importantly, the sanity of Vera. She's made out to be teetering on the edge of being a massively unreliable narrator. And as her reality shifts, her memories mix and then conflict with her present, leading her to question what's real and what's imagined. Vera is also a very sympathetic character based on what we know of her from her present, and it can become just a bit heart-wrenching and even emotionally confusing as she encounters each new oddity in her timeline. Now, I'm impressed at how the writing keeps the story moving and being told efficiently, but also maintains the narratives despite them crisscrossing over each other. Now, it'd be very easy to lose the plot and get muddled in just convoluted arcs. But thankfully, as confusing and mind-bending as some parts are, by the end, it's all sorted out, and it makes good sense. The movie is slightly on the longer side at 2 hours and 8 minutes, but I was riveted through so much of it. The pieces begin to fall more and more into place, and I think you're going to see some of the reveals coming before they're fully told. But for me, I only put those pieces together just before this show actually did it for us. But I also like that after that, there's still some more story to be told, creating more ongoing tension that's enhanced by some mounting urgency. And I really enjoyed how character decisions worked to complicate and even dictate certain moves, adding just so much more suspense to what played out. The aesthetics of the production are awesome. We transition back and forth from the present to the past seamlessly and effortlessly, with really the only clues as to where we're at because of just clothing or certain characters. Now, outside of that, we're drawn into Vera's waking nightmare. Or maybe it's her delusion. Or maybe it's her reality. <laughs> I mean, either way, the execution, it's spectacular. Now, I'm curious if the ending is going to be satisfying for everybody. While I like it, sort of, there's an element that feels a bit up for discussion. And then depending on how it leans, I could be very in favor of the events or disappointed by them. 
And yeah, I do know that that's terribly vague, but you just need to watch to understand the context because otherwise I just don't want to spoil how it all concludes. So overall, Mirage is a mind-bending execution of moving mystery and well-thought-out time manipulation. With Adriana Ugarte in the lead, she elicits sympathy, earning our compassion playing a displaced and confused civilian investigator while attempting to put the pieces of the mystery together and then simultaneously trying to get back to the reality she knew. The storytelling is complex and difficult, but also explained to provide clear answers. This isn't going to be for everybody, but if you enjoy movies that you have to really pay attention to and put away all distractions in order to understand, this should be one to check out. There's brief sex and nudity, a lot of profanity, and some violence. I give Mirage four out of five couches. So what's a movie that makes your head hurt? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me. You know, I think the next movie I'm going to dive into is Jacob's Ladder. Now, I saw that a handful of times in the theater. It just melted my brain. But it's been probably at least a decade, maybe even more, since I last saw it. And Mirage, it sparked some small feels of that. So I'll hopefully bring you a review of that messed up classic very soon.